it's easy to forget the incredible heights Mesut Ozil has reached during his 15-year career. Since honing his skills on the streets of Gelsenkirchen, the playmaker has wowed audiences around the world for club and country, winning countless honours along the way. A four-time Ballon d'Or nominee, there are very few who come close to matching his achievements in the game. Yet over the past few seasons, his star quality has rapidly faded. Shunned by an underperforming Arsenal side who are determined to move him on, his time among the elite is all but finished. But how did it reach this point? We are taking a closer look at the rise and fall of Mesut Ozil, one of the most gifted creators the Premier League has ever seen. Rise to Fame The son of second-generation Turkish-German nationals, Ozil started off at his boyhood club Schalke in 2016. However, a fallout with the club over his wages meant he was sold to Werder Bremen two years later for merely 5 million euros. It was a decision Schalke would live to regret. In his first full season with Werder, Ozil lit up the Bundesliga with three goals and 15 assists. He reached the UEFA Cup final, then claimed the 08-09 DFB Pokal trophy thanks to his winning goal against Bayer Leverkusen. A few months later, a man of the match performance in the final of the European Under-21s Championships delivered his next piece of silverware. In a side featuring household stars like Manuel Neuer, Jerome Boateng and Mats Hummels, it was Ozil's name that stood out. At the spearhead of Bremen's midfield diamond, 12 months later, Ozil finished the season with a ridiculous 10 goals and 29 assists in all competitions. Combining what he would later describe as his Turkish flair with his German attitude, Ozil was simply unplayable, averaging a goal involvement every other game for the River Islanders. That summer, Ozil found himself on the plane to South Africa, having forced his way into Germany's World Cup squad. A pre-tournament injury to Michael Ballack had thrown him into starting contention, and the young talent wasted little time in pressing on the greatest stage of all. Ozil contributed three assists as the Mannschaft stormed to the semi-finals, obliterating England and Argentina before falling to Spain. FIFA named Ozil among the competition's 10 best players, and Miroslav Klose labelled him a future World Player of the Year. Real Madrid and Jose Mourinho took note, and 20 million euros later, he was off to the Spanish capital. His national team's first great success from an immigrant background, Ozil's slim build and mesmerising elegance had always differed from the tactically disciplined and physically imposing football the Germans were used to. However, in the glitzy world of the Galacticos, Ozil would be right at home. It wasn't long before he had replaced Kaka as their main creator. In his first season at the Bernabeu, Ozil ended on 25 assists, the most from any player in any major European competition. Quite remarkably, he would go on to add an additional 69 goals in all competitions across the next two campaigns, finishing as the highest assist maker in La Liga three years running. In Cristiano Ronaldo, he discovered the perfect dancing partner. Ozil laid on 27 assists for the deadly forward during his time in Madrid, the most of anyone in that period. Together, they inspired Los Blancos to the 2011-12 league title when they became the first side to break the 100 points barrier in the competition's history. Ozil was at the peak of his powers and declared his desire to see out his career in the Spanish capital, but at the end of the 2012-13 season, that was no longer possible. Start of the decline Jose Mourinho was fired following a trophyless campaign and Carlo Ancelotti brought in. Meanwhile, Madrid's president Florentino Perez embarked on a monumental £160 million spending spree, including breaking the world transfer record to sign Gareth Bale. It was a huge investment and even with multiple departures, Madrid was short of funds. Ancelotti was told either Mesut Ozil or Angel Di Maria would have to go next. Ozil, perhaps feeling his position was untouchable, had already agitated Real's hierarchy by demanding pay parity with Cristiano Ronaldo. This was never met, and once it was established Ancelotti favoured Di Maria following an impressive pre-season, his departure was sanctioned. Arsenal arrived, pulling off a spectacular £42.3 million deal to much fanfare. It was the biggest sale in Los Blancos history, and received immediate backlash from Madrid players and fans alike, most significantly from Ronaldo himself, blasting the departure as very bad news. For Ozil though, the decision to join Arsenal was met with some confusion. He was arguably the world's best number 10, yet the Gunners hadn't won a trophy in almost a decade and struggled to keep their top players. It was undoubtedly a step down in his career. But in truth, the German was offered a surprising lack of alternatives. Four years later, an Ozil had charmed an adoring Emirates faithful. In his first two seasons, he helped Arsenal capture consecutive FA Cups, either side of tasting World Cup glory in Brazil. This was before adding a third FA Cup trophy in 2017-18.
though for all the silverware, 2015-16 proved to be his finest campaign to date in England. Ozil laid on a stunning 4.2 key passes per 90 to finish the season with 19 Premier League assists, one shy of Thierry Henry's competition record. Arsenal would even finish second that year, their best result since 2004-05. Yet by the start of the 17-18 season, the North Londoners faced a dilemma. Both Mesut Ozil and Alexis Sanchez were entering the final year of their contracts, and it was financially impossible to re-sign both their talisman. The club had a decision to make, and there were plenty of reasons to go with the Chilean. For all his success, it was often felt Ozil went missing against the toughest of opponents, most notably during crushing defeats by Bayern Munich in the Champions League. The same issues had been echoed at Madrid, where fitness struggles and mental lapses ruined the latter stages of his games. Then there were questions over his commitment. It's been suggested that under Wenger, Ursel could pick and choose which matches he played, with illness used to cover his absence. For all his quality, Sanchez was far more reliable. However, the South American could never match his commercial pool. With 83 million followers across his social media platforms, Ursel proved an invaluable asset for shirt sales and beyond. And so, in January 2018, Sanchez headed to Manchester United, while Arsenal handed Ozil a new three-year extension to the tune of 350k per week. It not only made him the highest-paid player in Arsenal's history, but one of the top earners in English football. Sure enough, a massive £250 million kit deal with Adidas and lucrative partnership with Visit Rwanda followed closely after his signature. This was supposed to be a triumph for Arsenal, a renewed demonstration of their status among football's elite. But roll on six months, and change was happening at the Emirates once more. Fall from grace. After 22 years in charge, Arsene Wenger finally left Arsenal. In his place arrived Unai Emery, along with his aggressive brand of attacking football. The Spaniard wanted his side to press hard, including his playmaker. Despite some initial success for Ozil, it became evident Emery preferred Aaron Ramsey as his attacking central midfielder thanks to his defensive work rate, with Granit Xhaka and Lucas Torreira providing a double pivot with either a 4-2-3-1 or 3-5-2, Ozil was pushed out to the wing where his lack of pace held him back. As the season dragged on, the 30-year-old's numbers plummeted. By December, he had only posted a single assist and he again went missing with various back injuries and illnesses. Just six goal involvements followed and he would end the campaign on his lowest league minutes and key pass statistics since his days with Schalke. This all came against the backdrop of a disastrous World Cup campaign in Russia, where Ozil emerged as the scapegoat for Germany's failure to exit the group stage. In an explosive turn of events, he retired from international football while accusing the German FA of racial discrimination. Right or wrongly, his status on the world stage was dwindling. By the end of the 2019-20 campaign, Ozil's fall from grace was complete. The arrival of Mikel Arteta had failed to reinvigorate their most talented player, and as March approached, the Germans still only had three goal involvements from just under 1,500 league minutes. Yet for all his struggles to produce in the final third, Ozil was still regularly involved. However, that would change as the world plunged into the global pandemic. Tensions had already been brewing between the player and club, as Arsenal publicly distanced themselves from comments Ozil made denouncing the treatment of Uyghur Muslims by the Chinese government. How much of an impact this had on what was to follow is open to debate, but the next stage of events would create an irreversible rift between the two. With football on pause, Arsenal's finances took a significant hit, and multiple redundancies were made behind the scenes. In response, the players were asked to take a 12.5% pay cut to help, but Ozil refused. The German would later cite a lack of information from the board as his reason, but considering his status as their biggest earner, it proved a significant turning point in his relationship with his employer. His decision to then publicly embarrass the board by offering financial support to the recently redundant club mascot, the Gunnosaurus, did little to help the situation. When football returned, Ozil did not. His involvement in Arsenal's victory over West Ham United last March looks to be his last. Their feelings towards their number 10 were made abundantly clear when Arteta left him out of the squad entirely for the current campaign. And even with the side crying out for a creative spark, it's never appeared likely that Ozil had a future at the Emirates. Now, with a long-touted move to Fenerbahce finally in the making, an end to the impasse is in sight. Whether he heads to Turkey or America next remains to be seen. But the sad reality is for Ozil, his time at the highest level is over at just 32. Unfortunately for the playmaker, his mercurial brand of football has lost value in the modern game, though his inability to adapt has never helped his cause. Ozil will leave Arsenal with mixed emotions, having achieved so much yet crashed so suddenly. 
but irrelevant of what's happened, it shouldn't be forgotten what a showman he was when he decided to let the magic flow. And that's all we have time for today, but let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, do give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more great content. Bye for now.